Welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12. This is one of my testing worlds. I've got several. And in this video, we're going to be looking at, well, not necessarily traps, but triggers. Because a couple of people have asked over the past sort of a couple of months when it comes to triggering things, can you have a situation where you need two actors standing on a pressure plate in order for a door to open or for something to happen. And I've responded and said, yes. Um, <laughs> and now I've gone and found out how. So that's what I want to share with you. So um, this is, just to reiterate, so you need two or more actors standing on very specific places in order for something else to happen. And you see this a lot in um, in video games, you know, where you have to put an actor on this button and somebody on that button and then the portcullis opens or whatever it might be. So that kind of scenario is what we're doing. Now, I've got Hayley here um, that I'm going to use to demonstrate this. And I've got a backup Nundro because I am going to need a second person to set the other one off. Now, these three tiles in the middle are all hidden. The one on the left is our first trigger, but that's hidden from the players. The one on the right is our second trigger, which is also hidden from the players until they actually stand on it. And then we've got, well, I just chucked down a campfire that we want to light up by standing on these two pressure plates. So, um, I've set it up to put some messages in the chat for us to hopefully you can follow what's going along. So when Haley steps on this first one here. First of all, I shrunk Haley so you can see in the background. First of all, it's going to show this tile is going to light up. You don't need to do that at all. I just done it to show you that she is standing on that. And what I've put in chat, it has said that tri tile trigger one, which is the one Haley standing on, is set to true. So yes, there is an actor on that trigger. Um, and tile trigger two is set to nothing because that hasn't been set yet. Uh, it then, other, uh, then under, says under there, nothing to see here. In other words, nothing happens. That fire has not lit up. If I move Haley off, we can see that not only does that token, that, uh, sorry, that tile she was standing on, it gets hidden again, but in the chat it says, token has left the area, door trigger one is now false, and door trigger two is now nothing, because we haven't set that one yet. Let's step on the next one. You can probably predict what this is going to do. It's going to do pretty much exactly the same. So it says trigger tile one now set to false because there's no character on that first one. But trigger tile two is now set to true. But nothing to see here. It's not going to do anything. So again, I can step off of that one exactly the same as the first one. Token has left the area. Door trigger one is now false door trigger 2 is also false. Now I called them door triggers because I was going to get it to do a door at first but I thought something visual like the campfire would be better. So we can see that Haley cannot light that campfire by herself. Right let's bring Nundro in. I also shrunk him down a bit. So we know Nundro can stand on this one and it says trigger tile 1 set to false and trigger tile 2 is set to true. Watch the campfire when Haley moves on to the second trigger. It lights up. So Haley's chat says trigger tile one is now set to true because there is an actor on it. And actually it doesn't, <laughs> it should say tile trigger two set to true as well because Nundro's on it. Um, I've botched something up there with, uh, with what I've typed in. So both of them on it, it works. Now I haven't set any actions like what happens if you then walk off of it because if it was for opening a portcullis or something like that you've got that action and it is working so the, I think this is what those people who were querying it this is what they were after getting two or more actors on so I've only done two to try and keep it simple but it's easily expandable let's move Haley out the way and Nundro out the way because these two are pretty much identical in what they're doing so let's have a look first of all Again, unless you're doing this as a one-off in one particular scene, you're probably best off using tile, uh, sorry, using tagger. Oh look, that doesn't help, the fact I've called that trigger rather than trigger. <laughs> and spell your tags right. <laughs> 
So I've just put an image on this, which is this one here that I nicked from JB2A. And under my triggers for my setup, this is an active tile. Okay, uh, and I've got must have site. Now I've got it, it's going to trigger something when you enter or exit. Okay, so or exit and enter. It doesn't matter which way round those are. So any token, if they enter it or exit it, it's going to identify that that's happened. Now both of these are the same except for the name of their tags. If I look at actions, this is where it starts to get potentially confusing. I'm going to zoom in on the edit for this bit. So what we're doing is we're using these things called landings. So landings just split up the actions into sections and you can see I've got three very useful automatically amongst active tile triggers. If you use landings it breaks them up. You see I've got a green section, a purple section and a blue section. So that first section green one you can see the landing is called underscore enter. What that says is if a token enters, it's going to do this stuff. So what's it going to do? It's going to show its own tile. We saw that happen. It's going to set a variable. Okay, so if I open this up, this is going to set a variable on this tile called door trig one and it's going to set it to true. Now this is really important. Your variable must be something that isn't used anywhere else at all. Don't call it combat or something like that that is used in the background because you'll get all sorts of hideous things. You know, if I wanted to be careful, I could have called it CG underscore, um, knowing that that's not going to come up anywhere else. But I've just called it door trig one. And the value I've said, so remember this is when they enter the tile, set it to true. So the value equals true. Be aware there is a space between that equals and that true. Okay, That's really important. If you don't put that space in it won't realize that you're saying that door trigger is true. In other words somebody is standing on this. Yes. That's basically what that is doing. Okay. I then got that chat message which is just a chat message tile trigger is set to and this is how I'm getting it to look at so curly bracket curly bracket please look at the variable dot door trig one variable and it's going to print that in the chat and we know we've just set that to true uh, and it's also going to look at the tile trigger two set to again we're looking for a variable for door trig two now the reason why that was coming up blank to start with is because that doesn't get set until somebody steps on and off of there then it is set to true and then false. So before that it doesn't exist so it's what they call null. It's a nothing. Um, not the same as zero. It's just literally nothing at all. That's why when it's trying to show that in the message it just doesn't show anything. It's fine. That's totally normal. So. We are saying for this just chat message, just put that in chat. And I've done this for your purposes, but you can see that you can do things with it, with those variables and put it into chat if you wanted to. Okay, so after that chat message, I'm checking, I'm using check variable on trigger tile two, not trigger tile two, on this tile over here, the second tile, I'm checking the variable on that and I'm checking the other variable door trig two, and to see if that is true. If it is true, we're going to carry on this because we know. Let's make this clear. Because we're still in this green area, we've entered this one, so we know that that trigger is true for this tile. So we only need to check if it's also true for this tile over here to the right. So if it is true, it's going to carry on. If it's not true, it's going to jump to the area called end it. So if it's not true, it will jump to end it. And end it does nothing except a chat message that says nothing to see. And you saw that come up. If it is true, so we're on this tile and that trigger is true as well, somebody on that trial, then do whatever it is we want to do. In this case, I'm just showing this 
fireplace tile that's all I'm doing but you could have it unlock a door you could have it summon a monster you could have it play sounds you could have it reveal lots of different tiles and play a sound and start combat and do all sorts of other things so when we exit so that's that's that that's all that is and this is the same on the other tile except of course we're setting that tiles door trig 2 to be true and we're checking door trig 1 to see if that's true I hope that makes sense now what happens when we leave this tile so when we leave it we've got a landing for underscore exit in other words the token exits this tile what's it going to do it's going to hide this tile not this tile not that tile hide the tile we're talking about and it's going to reset that variable of door trig one to false. Okay, so same as we did before. When we when we enter, we set it to true. When we leave, we set it to false. And again, remember it's equals space false or equals space true. Okay, so don't get that wrong. And then I've got a chat message to say the token has left the area. So that is what it's doing. Now, I don't need to have a lot of this fluff in here if I don't want to I don't need to show the trigger tile the tile that's triggering it that can stay hidden it can be a hidden switch I want to set the variable yes do I need to say in the chat message that that's been done no I can get rid of that check the variable yes show the tile brilliant when I exit hide the tile not needed because I'm not showing it um, I do want to set it to false do I want a chat message I don't need it and again for the landing I don't need it so this is actually all we need when we enter the tile set the variable to say hey there's somebody on this tile so door trigger equals true and then we check to see if door trigger 2 is also true if it is show the fire fireplace if it's not we jump to end it and nothing happens okay when we leave the only thing we need to do is to say oh by the way this door trigger is now false again okay so that's all we actually need for it everything else is fluff so let me rehide this and grab Haley and step on this first one we just altered now bearing in mind this tile is hidden so the player wouldn't even know that there was a trigger there okay so it can be secretly hidden from them we stick Nundro onto this one that we haven't altered, so it has come up and it's given us chat messages. But now when Haley treads on this one, the logic is still working in the background and the campfire lights. Oh, it's fun, isn't it? So that answers that question for people about can you do that? Now I know what the next question is gonna be, is can you have it where you need three characters to do it? Yeah, you absolutely can. And all we would do is repeat that same logic where we're adding in those extra triggers and those extra checks. Now, one thing I did do in this, as you will have noticed, is I'm checking these variables on these individual tokens. What you could do, and especially as it gets more complex, what would be more simple, is to, instead of setting the variable on its own tile, is set the variable on this tile. So that is essentially going to have the three variables on it for uh, trigger one, trigger two, and trigger three. So these trigger tiles are checking what's actually on this tile with regard to those variables. That would be a neater way of doing it and it would make it slightly easier to do. Um, and you could set up one and just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, uh, and just change the names of those individual ones. So this would be checking variable one, that would be checking sorry that would be setting variable one and unsetting it uh, and then checking all of them that would be setting variable two and uh, unsetting it and checking all of them that one would be setting variable three and unsetting it and checking all of them that one would be setting and unsetting variable four and checking all of them and on and on and on. Now, obviously, you can't have too many or otherwise you run out of players. <laughs> it gets a bit silly, um, but you can absolutely do that. And because we're using that kind of logic, you can even do it that they have to move in a particular order. So 
again we've used to set those variables to true or false what you could do is actually have it add a number so it increases it by one if you step on this tile uh, it increases it by seven if you step on this tile it decreases it by five if you step on this tile and essentially have like a maths equation that if Haley comes along and walks on them in the correct order it will do the sum and you'll end up with a very specific number which when they pull the lever opens the gate you absolutely could do that if you do it in the wrong order the maths isn't going to work is it Okay, it's, <laughs> it's going to set the variables all incorrectly and you're going to end up with the wrong total for your sum. Therefore, when they pull that lever, is it the correct answer? The answer is no, nothing happens. Re and it resets all the variables back and they've got to work out the pattern again. So you could do that again out the scope of this video. So I hope that's been interesting. I hope you've learned something, um, especially those guys who specifically wanted this. I mean, I wouldn't go mad and have too many of them because partly you start to impact performance and partly you'll start to frustrate your players a little. But you can absolutely combine this sort of thing with not just these, um, you know, stepping on, stepping off tiles, but if you remember, we did only a few videos ago about switches, switching things on and off. And we had like a switch we could turn on and off and it turned that light on and off. Well, instead of turning the light on and off, it could set that switch to be true or false, depending on whether it's switched on or off. And again, you can use the same logic to check, are they or all the switches true? in which case open the gate so you can use it for many different things you let your imagination run wild i do warn you though is this is quite complex if you're not somebody who's used to coding and following the logic you might struggle a bit but do have a play see if you can at least replicate what i've done here with just just a two don't go nuts um because it might bring a nice little flavor to your games but anyway that's it for this one gonna wrap it up Take care, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, leave a like, leave a comment, all of that good stuff, and I will see you in the next one.